we have here the talented Julio Cesar Cedillo, and he plays Chato in the film The Black Demon. So tell us a little bit about your character and anything that you learned in this film. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Julio Cedillo, Julio Cesar Cedillo, and I play Chato. Chato is a roughneck. He's an oil worker on the off the coast uh, there in Baja California. It's um, it's called the El Diamante, and so my character and one of my best friends, Junior, played by Jorge uh, uh, Jimenez, is uh, we're both trapped on this on this rig after this uh, megalodon prehistoric shark has been wreaking havoc on our oil rig, and so we're the last survivors, and we pretty much are going to end up dying on that rig. But then all of a sudden, uh, this oil inspector shows up unannounced. We didn't know about it. And um, he finds his way there. And along the way, his family, after uh, dealing with some bad guys on shore, end up on the oil rig as well. And now we're all trapped on this rig trying to find our way off this thing because this, this, this shark, which is mainly a curse brought on by an Aztec god, Tlaloc. And uh, yeah, so basically the whole movie is a survival movie. It is a shark movie, without a doubt, but it's also a survival movie, and I think people are going to like it. It's, you know, it's the kind of movie that you have never seen with, um, you know, with Latin characters. You know what I mean? And that's something that's that's kind of nice. We haven't seen that element. I'll be honest with you. I've learned that I will never do any more underwater scenes ever again. I <laughs> I, I spent five hours underwater, and then I watched the movie last night. And I think I'm barely a minute underwater. So, you know, it's one of the things where, oh, uh, it's not for me. I'm not a diver. I don't even know how to swim. And they they shoved me down into the water. So, yeah, it was, it was, was uh, not Were they me. intense lessons? Like, was it five hours every single day learning how to No, no, no. It was one time. No. In fact, uh, you know, we shot this film December tw of 2021 and finished in January of 2022. And, um at the new year in January, we all came back after a little a little week break for all the holidays. Uh, half the crew got COVID, and that's a lot of people. So we all had to stop, you know, be safe, isolate ourselves. And a large portion of our uh, crew are, are from the Dominican Republic, which is which is where we shot the film. Oh, we shot, okay. yeah, we shot on a tank where they shoot all these kinds of ocean uh, films. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a 60,000 square foot uh, tank specifically built for this. The middle part of it drops down to about 20 to 23 feet. Mm -hmm. But to be safe and to keep everyone, their local safe, we we all stop and isolate it for 10 days. And then after 10 days, uh, three days later, I get called to go shoot the underwater stuff. And it was only for one day, but five hours is enough for me. And yeah, as <laughs> big as that space was where we were shooting, I felt so claustrophobic and it was the weirdest thing. Um and you do get to see me underwater uh, diving, which was kind of cool, but I'll never do it again. For me, this film, it definitely was like a cautionary tale on what we are doing to this planet in a way, because the shots that were that you will see in the film, um, it's it's, yeah, a cautionary tale. Luckily, there's only a portion of the film that addresses that to a degree that you get to understand the impact of what we're doing to the planet and how we should pay attention. Luckily, that's not most of the film. The film is a lot about this family trying to figure itself out and the kind of values that they have to uh, live by, you know, especially uh, the husband and wife. Perchato, he really is just there to accommodate uh, survival. I mean, he was going to die on this thing and he, he realizes now he has something worth living for, which is how do we help this family and try to get off? So you, you're going to have to pick what side do you want to live on? on? You know, whether you want to take care of yourself and other, whether you take care of others or you just take care of yourself, right? The planet is the same thing. We can either accept it or not. And in movies, it's kind of tough because you don't want to get too preachy and that's a fine line, right? But I think in this one, you know, yeah. it's it's within a story. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and I think also, you know, when you think about it, um, you know, this takes place out in the middle of the, in, of the water and we're dealing with Mexican nationals. I always feel that third world countries always get the brink of the of the problem, right? They they yeah. get the the brunt of the problem. Yes. Because we're always the ones suffering from the the incompetence of big corporate America. But again, you know, some people might like that element of the story, some people might not. But at the end yeah. of the day, it's a shark movie and they yeah. still get to deal with the shark. You know, we have an oil leak in the rig, but that doesn't 
that's not what's going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to kill you is the shark. Right. So in the end, but it's kind of cool how they embed sort of that uh, mythical legend aspect of El Demonio Negro, which is the black demon. Right. Yeah. That was my next question for you have prior to this film. Did you know so much about like kind of the asset culture and the legends and all of that? Yeah. I I think people will enjoy it because you know, we do talk about uh, the uh, the god of fertility, the god of water. You know, we're talking about Tlaloc, right? Yes. And there are many gods within the Aztec culture, right? Within the indig- indigenous culture. And so that part of it was fun. But to tie it to a big megalodon prehistoric shark, which is basically um, the thing that's been sent by the gods to, you know, kind of make everything right. Um yeah, that part was that part was cool, but I, I had to go look it up because I've never heard of El Demonio Negro. There are very few stories. There's a few out there, and they go as back as the 1500s. Um, there were basically sightings of a big, you know, this big black thing in the middle of the ocean. It could have been mistaken. It could have been a sh- uh, whale. It could have been any number of things. Mm-hmm. But I always look at it more like we. That means we now have our own Loch Ness monster. You know, we, we have the Loch Ness monster. We have the Chupacabras. We have La Llorona. We have El Cucuy. You know, so it's kind of all. You know, it's it's a belief system, and I yeah. think I think. Uh, especially in the Latin culture, when we have this sort of belief system, it's almost like our we have this little thing on our on our back that's reminding us we better behave, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you're super Catholic or super superstitious, that's a part of who we are as a, as a people. I love that you incorporated that in the film. Actually, all of you guys, there's a scene um, where before everything goes down, you know, you guys stop to pray, and that's super important because as Latinos, it's like like you mentioned, it's a little like a little angel or something in our shoulders telling us we can and yeah no without a doubt and you know you know i'm like look i'm a catholic i'm not a practicing catholic i you know i have a lot of faith and that faith is between me and my 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 creator yes i did like the part where we pray but what i even liked better was that we didn't pray in english or spanish No. yes we prayed in the Nahuatl language so uh there was a moment where i had to you know, say This is a real Nahuatl language. There's a whole passage that I had to pray. Uh, if you read it, it's it almost seems unreadable, but it's a beautiful language. And they sent me a recording by a professor mm-hmm. of language in the Nahuatl language from the University of Mex- Mexico City. So uh, I had to spend time making sure I was pronouncing okay. everything correctly. And uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I nailed it so many times when we were shooting that scene, but then the way the director sort of cuts it and edits it, it becomes kind of a bit bigger than life in the way the prayer comes out. I honestly love the movie. I think that it was a fine balance between family, faith, and, you know, a kind of gory a little bit, but it was, it, it was a perfect balance. And um, I love your character too, how you oh, were just, yeah. you were down for everything, you know, you were there to support, but also there to be like, you know, let's do this. Let's take this on. And, and, so- and there was pushback. You know, the thing the thing I was afraid of, you know, especially with the film, you know, we don't want the white savior aspect of it. And that's a fine line, mm-hmm. you know, and the white savior thing is not always good. And I like that my character, there's a moment in the film several times where I confronted, you know, uh, Josh's character. And um, I do say, open your eyes, cabron, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> we were talking about that, yes. And that's like, wow, I've never seen it like that on film quite that way. And um, the other thing I liked was that, yeah, there was a lot of pushback on on the guy who thinks he knows everything, which is really great for Josh's character because it kind of it kind of puts him at a disadvantage of just being the all knowing. And 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 as a, you know, he's in our country in Mexico, right, inspecting the rig. We have to remind him, you know, he we put him in his place, but we do it out of waking him up not to attack him but to wake him up to what's happening you know the and I really of life, yeah. yeah and you know you said about family too even though junior uh you know jorge is an exceptional actor if you look him up he's done so many great films and jorge and i we were trying to figure out ways to to really come up with uh you know moments where we you could tell that our our friendship was very strong and there is a moment in the film where uh we're trying to figure out who dives first right and yes. it's a very comical scene. And funny enough, we wrote that scene. He, ah, and, I, nice. he and I came up with that. Yeah, we, we were basically, we're going to just go down. But something had to happen there. And uh, he's such a fine actor. And we we found a beautiful, simple moment to create that moment for ourselves. Because we're actually best friends in real life. And 
Oh, he, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I just spoke to him earlier. He lives in uh, Coahuila, and he okay. has family in San Antonio. I live here. We live. I live here in Texas, and he lives in in Zaragoza, Coahuila. And um, so it was really nice to to be together because we were actually really good friends, and we spent a lot of time drinking beer while we were in the Dominican Republic. Public. <laughs> Did you guys get cast at the same time, or how was the process like? We had no clue we were going to be in this movie until oh, we yeah. showed up. I was just blown away. I was like, "Whoa!" You know, that's how you it know it was meant fantastic. to be. <laughs> it was meant to be, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. There is a part in the film also where, personally, I thought it was a little like gross, kind of. Yeah. Um, but that's only because I don't really know much about scuba diving. Yeah. Uh, there is a scene almost closer to the end where he says, I don't have enough spit. Yeah. And then you grab the mask and you. Yeah. Spit. Yeah. That was kind of gross, but you yeah, know, I want to know, did you actually spit in that mask? Cause I feel like oh, you yeah. would like to know. Oh no, I spit, I spit on the mask. I mean, oh. I, had, I had to spit on the mask. Now, now to explain to everybody who doesn't scuba dive, yes. remember, I didn't know about this. Stuff, I don't know how to swim. I don't know. how to, I had to learn how to scuba dive. So the spit is actually what helps you clear up your mask. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it actually is uh, an element of something in your saliva that keeps it, you know, where you can see through it. You That's the one thing you do before you go down. There is a liquid you could use, but if you don't have it, you use spit. And um, so people who scuba dive will get it. Everyone else will go, why? Why did they do that, right? And there yeah. are signs that you use in scuba diving when you're underwater and you look at each other. You can't talk. You know, we don't have, you know, headsets so you do this that means you're okay everything's okay oh okay there's an emergency and you're down below the water everybody knows this means emergency and you fly and you go up you know you said that in the film too i was like mm, does that mean he's yeah it means let's yeah. get out of here we're in trouble yeah. you know yeah. that's amazing i think all those little kind of nuances and fun things that people may not know I that's why I'm asking because I'm like yeah. I people would love to know this I know I did when I watched the film I was taken back like oh no is that is that a normal thing well you know it's funny <laughs> because like uh how can I put it I, I don't, and I'm gonna make light of it I'm gonna make us laugh yeah. here because in general the Latinos do not go scuba diving mm -hmm. the first thing a Latino will say why in the world am I gonna go down below and especially swim with with sharks, right? Yeah. Uh, it's almost like when people go uh, safari hunting, why do you want to go chase a tiger or a lion? Only crazy people. And the comedy is we always make fun of people who are white because we say, oh, those crazy white people, they're the only ones that'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. I mean, I'm being honest. So for me, that was the thing. It was almost like uh, scuba diving is foreign to most of us. We have no idea or any desire to do that. Yes. You know, but when you're making a movie, it's not the same as just casually going underwater and looking at the coral reef or whatever. That is a nice, relaxing thing. And I, I would do that if it was the coral reef, but I was below down 22, 23 feet. Everything was plainly blue because they were going to CGI so much stuff. Mm. Uh, there's a moment in the film, uh, you don't see as much of it, but oh my gosh, we worked on it so much where the shark goes by. And, and the tail moves the water in such a way that it's, it, it spins me upside down. Oh. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, we worked on that so much. There was a point where I was underwater where I couldn't tell where I was in the actual tank. And, and then, and I was getting claustrophobic. So I, you know, it's not a fun thing for me if we're making movies. Yeah. If I were to go do it for fun, I probably would do it. What is something that you took away like overall this whole experience and the whole film and what do you want fans to take away when they watch this film what i take away from it for myself personally yes is that man wow to, to actually be in a film where most of the characters are latinos and it wasn't necessarily about being latino even though we're in the film it's really about survival, but to see those faces with those kids and the wife and the majority of them were all Latinos and we're, and, and it's got this, you know, this epic, you know, sort of vibe about it. Mm -hmm. Whether people love the film or not, it, look, it, there are people who love it and there may be people who don't like it, but in the end, we should feel proud that, you know, we're kind of up there with some of those big shark movies, you know? And we talk about, you know, people talk about Jaws, which of course is a classic. And honestly, uh, not to compare them to completely different kinds of films, but 
our shark is massive compared to Jaws, right? But Jaws is a classic and we we must respect it. But at the same time, it's like, God, we're going to be in the same list with all these great uh, shark Mm -hmm. films. So that's, I kind of walk away with that. In terms of like, even something more profound for me, I feel like the film will just remind people that we have a lot to offer in movies and that family is important. And, and even more important, I want people to know whoever's listening to this. Somebody asked me, what is it like to work in Hollywood? I don't work in Hollywood. I'm an actor who lives in Texas and I've been here my whole life. I haven't left. I've worked on a lot of great movies. Uh, I worked on a show that was pretty successful, Narcos Mexico on Netflix. Oh, yes. Um, and I've got more movies coming up, but what I want to tell everybody is don't wait. Don't wait for anyone to tell you that you can start making movies. Don't wait for someone to give you permission. You can, you can now take your phone. You can go get your friends. There's, there's going to be plenty of people who want to participate with you. Just go do your thing and don't wait for the right script. Just do something. I say this because there's plenty of people doing well in our business, in the entertainment business. Latinos are always buying movies. We're always buying everything yeah. in the entertainment world. And we have to stop and realize that we have so much buying power that, you know, we we need to support as much as we can any of these projects. Now, mind you, if they're bad and you don't like them, that's fine. No one's going to force you. But the Black community... It's a very diverse community, and it's a there's socioeconomic levels to that, mm-hmm. but but their shared experience is very American. We as Latinos are Cuban, uh, Argentine, Puerto Rican, Mexican. Like we're such a di- we're so many different cultures mm-hmm. that when we do a, a film, everybody wants to feel represented, and when they don't feel represented, they hate on it. Yeah, and I think that's something we have to kind of reckon with a bit and not 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 talking about the audience i'm talking about the filmmakers don't try to tell everybody's story just tell a good story and let the culture be nuanced but yes. tell more universal stories and then also have a more diverse cast as well but latinos have a place at the table but everybody wants to do something do it now if you if you're an aspiring filmmaker don't compare yourself to anything you just go do your thing if, if you do something cool someone's going to find you. They're going to want to work with you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody who's listening. And please, if you can, the movie comes out today, uh, April 28th, but we got this whole weekend. Go grab, you know, and I know it's a rated R, but don't let that scare you. There's not that much in there. Uh, So you can definitely take some of your kids. I mean, believe me, I know they're watching worse things than what we are doing. This is very, very, uh, it's a very light in terms of uh, gore, grizzly images. Uh, but please just come out and just remember it's a shark movie it's a popcorn movie Uh, we're not doing Shakespeare but it's definitely an entertaining film and please I hope you can come out and enjoy yourself so thank you so much